How's it going, you guys? Uh, it's Kenyo here. Um, and uh, today we are diving into some ideas I have. I love to share share ideas, and science is is, is um, an area of so many ideas. And so I wanted to release this just because I've been working on it for a little bit. And you know, you got to get ideas out there so people can give you feedback and things like that. So basically, this is breaking down a concept. Uh, thinking about um, the first six dimensions of reality um, if you want to think about it like that really there's eight in this framework um, because there's two dimensions that I mean people talk about zero dimension a little bit and um, nobody talks about plus dimension that's something that I'm introducing in this so just to break it down a little bit, um, the plus dimension. Maybe I should start from there. Uh, th my my the the concept behind that in this framework would be that um, the plus dimension, literally plus, um, would be uh, um, as it says in the fifth column there, the acuteness column. Um, it would be the foundational aspect of all reality so there's just power there or sometimes I call it the power dimension and it's just behind everything and all things there's just an immense limitless quantity of power um, and in that in, in that dimension I have um, the force I associate the, the strong force with that dimension and uh, if you know the strong nuclear force is also you know, as the name says, nuclear, you know, nuclear bombs. Why um, nuclear bombs explode so crazy? It's because we're releasing um, um, the power of the strong force. And um, uh, there I have as that the, the particle of that um, dimension, the gluons. Um, I'm associating a different particle, fundamental particle with each. Um, dimension um, yeah and then so I have the direction there forward um, so giving an orientation I don't know if that helped anyone me doing that but um forward you can see I have that in there and then observance blank so you know how we draw different dimensions and that dimension would be blank it's the one dimension that everybody can draw people want to be artists guess what just by having the potential to draw you have already participated in drawing <laughs> the 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 power dimension and it's even interesting you think about writer's block you know they say they stare at the blank page and they're overcome um, it kind of makes me think about that as well where it's just like okay what is that force that's pushing back on you it's because even before you begin to write the blankness of the page um, has its own power and you have to overcome that and then decide to begin to create which is no small thing um, so just by writing anything you're doing something but anyway um, so I have gluons there if you know gluons are what allow um, quarks to um, to interact and we know the quarks create um, protons and neutrons, all of the baryons. Um, and then now uh, we go over to the zero dimension, which um, I have right after the plus dimension, and that gets into, I call that the circle dimension sometimes. Um, and I think that plays into, you know, concepts where we talk about infinity. Um, I have that associated with the weak force. Um, already I'm thinking about switching that up because that, that just doesn't seem accurate to me. But anyway, um, um, so yeah, and there, there's different things filled in here. This is really just a super rough draft. I think, for instance, where it says emergence and particle there, I think that's incorrect. and a lot of the stuff in the emergence category 
I think is incorrect actually. For instance, uh, on four, it associates uh, matter with the fourth dimension, whereas I actually think matter would be associated with the fifth dimension. But anyway, I'm going to be working on this for the rest of my life. So, um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and continue. Um, then for particles, there I have the WZ boson, the, um, and then first dimension, um, spin dimension. Of course, we got electricity there. Um, particle electron. Okay, getting some ideas. Um, the second dimension, magnetism. Nothing really super interesting there. Maybe particle photon. I don't know. Uh, this is all theoretical, of course. Not not even theoretical. What what's before theoretical? Crackpot. Um, third dimension. We have um, uh, the rise speed dimension. Um, where I thought that was interesting. Um, um, I'm really con considering so much of what we consider three-dimensional, uh, more of a matter of speed than anything else, because before you introduce both time and gravity, which you get in the fourth and fifth dimension, you don't really have any of what we consider to be reality. Um, you have, at most, kind of like I put there, you know, like neutrinos, really. Um, I think that's pretty accurate um, because uh, as we go forward, you start to see um, how um, those, the fourth and the fifth dimension, are really what allows for what we consider. Uh, even mass and, and matter to, to be to be existent. What I would put there is mass for the fourth dimension where it says matter. I would put mass um, and then matter is going to end up moving probably to being the particle of the fifth dimension. So by the time you go up there and see this, this is going to be changed already. Um, but um, yeah, because if you think about the Big Bang occurring without gravity. Now, they say that the speed of the Big Bang itself would have allowed for um, the electromagnetic force, which I've separated into two different forces, um, to allow for electrons to get into it, because electrons and, and protons are held together by the electromagnetic force. Um, but that's not true. I think we're relying a lot. I, I don't think it's true, I should say. I think we're relying a lot on the fourth and the fifth dimension in order to have things like temperature, um, to even allow for, um, the electromagnetic force to even have any effect. Um, and then the creation of protons themselves I don't think would be necessarily even possible without the fourth and fifth dimension so uh, just continuing on fourth dimension um, um, time and material I think that's correct um, and then mass will change where it says matter I would like to put mass um, because the Higgs boson I've associated the Higgs boson Article with um, that fourth dimension, and if you look at um, some of why they know the Higgs boson is even necessary, or, or how they discovered it, you'll realize that um, you have to make a three-dimensional model of the field before you can even. Um, understand the relevance of the Higgs boson and then and how it provides rest 
energy mass in order for an object to ex um, sort of exist in that three-dimensional field um, and I think that what we consider time really is only part of the three-dimensional reality for instance matter and all the forms of matter and all the elements um, those are all really different times so oxygen um, you know all the different elements that we think about those would all be different times um, and we as humans are like oh what about our past and future I don't think I think humans cause the flow of time for three-dimensional objects um, via our intelligence because we're higher dimensional higher than time in dimension and so for instance you know I can conceptualize the entire timeline of this thing from its elementary particles all the way down to whatever all the way to whatever future organization I would like to implement on it um, so we hold the, the the fullness of timelines now, as far as our own timelines um, I think where we are above time and and what we're moving through which is what we call it because of our conception has nothing to do with time but rather growth um, maybe or, I don't know yeah, I think humans are I don't think we really have the ability to put ourselves into the reality model we should focus more just on other things um, other than humans um, observance changing material okay and then uh, fifth dimension um, the together dimension, um, gravity's dimension, space dimension possibility, um, also um, possibility of course, um, curvature uh, particles is a, is the graviton, which I believe that matter. So far, I'm thinking. I don't believe these aren't beliefs. This is just me looking at at the information that I have. The, intelligence to process and, and doing my best to do that but um, I believe that what we consider matter is caused um, by gravitons um, and um, it's gravitons sort of um, having that effect and then we go on to the sixth dimension uh, the expansion dimension. I would even put I put quantum. The f quantum is the force. I think action. You could even put quantum there and put expansion as the force. The expansion force, which I think also perhaps plays a part in the expansion of the universe. That's what it looks like in between galaxies, inside of galaxies. I think that um, the fundamental particle, which I call quarksons, is. Um, responsible for what we call the something in the nothing or the fluctuations uh, in, in space and that quarksons and I'm going to publish a little bit of a, a paper on on quarksons which I I named them quarksons because they don't exist um, so that's kind of the fun part of this whole thing I think quarksons are the most fundamental unit of what we kind of call intelligence though I don't think it, it, it it gets into intelligence so much but I think um, it allows for um, uh, it's a particle that allows for all types of calculations to go on um, that allows for the gluons to know um, what uh, changes they need to make and in, in, in really every other particle I think they allow for a sort of calculation ability that allows for um, the emergence of a lot of other phenomena um, but yeah this is this is Jeff definitely just the beginning so I don't want to go on for too long but um, thank you for learning about this with me and I look forward to seeing what you have to say I will talk to you later <laughs>